Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some kits from Spellbinders June monthly kits. So I'm using the clear stamp and die. They also just have the clear stamps available. The small die of the month and then also the embossing folder of the month. Um, and we're gonna be making some interactive cards. It's different for me. Do I know what I'm doing? Ish. Stick around. We'll see how they come out. Um, so before I get too far into it here, I'm just die, I'm setting up all of my die cuts. Um, the kits are available through the 27th of the month. So I am getting here a little bit late, but I did double check that they are still available. While you're over there, <laughs> the kits for this month are so good. And so I don't get the large die of the month or the 3D embossing folder. But while you're over there, if you're going shopping, I would check those out because those are stellar this month. So good. Um, anywho, the other thing that I am trying different here is uh, I picked myself up some Spellbinders um, cardstock because everybody had been saying how good it was. And uh, I can confirm is very good. Uh, so I did use a combination of Spellbinders, of Hero Arts, and honestly, I think some Gina K. Oh, and Concord and Ninth. It's a, it's a menagerie of papers, and I'm good with that. Here, I'm doing the background. So originally, I thought I was going to do a different background, and that's the one that you saw just like a peek of in the beginning. Um, but I ended up changing it to a watercolor background. Here, I'm working on Canson watercolor, Monte, it's the watercolor paper, it's the Montevall one, not the um, Canson XL. That stuff's no good. Um, but anyway, so, and I'm just doing a really simple... Uh, like bluish teal blend. I'm using Salty Ocean, Mermaid Lagoon, and then Uncharted Mariner. If you have trouble blending Distress inks, um, may I recommend getting some watercolor paper because they blend so easy on there. Like I think it's because watercolor paper is meant to repel the moisture, so it kind of sits on top and gives you some more time to work with it. Blend beautifully, even the regular Distress inks. So I sprayed that down with my mister, and now because I wanted some shimmer, you know how I feel about the shimmers, uh, I am adding some perfect pearls. I am doing this while it is wet so that it will kind of like bloom out into the watercolor and create just like a all over pearlescent shine. If you want the actual spatters, you would want to do it while it was dry, and then you would just have pearl spots, polka dots, pearl dots. Um, but if you do it while it's wet, it'll bloom out into the rest of the water. I'm only showing you this one, but I did make a second one for my second card and I did it exactly the same way. Here I am just going through and I'm just taking my, um, cloth and just wiping up the excess water to help it dry a little bit faster. You don't want to actually touch this to the paper, otherwise it'll suck up all the moisture from there too, and your pigment at the same time. Um, and then I am going to dry this down. I am kind of, you can see coming at it from the front because I want to keep that top part nice and white and the water's just to the bottom. So now that that is dry, uh, I'm going to move on to my stamping. So these two interactive cards, one is using the small die of the month and one is using the stamp. So it's two different ways to make an interactive card. This is something that I don't do really ever, honestly, which is why I thought it would be fun. Like I don't, when I cut the dies is when I got the idea for it. I was like, oh, these would be so great. You could make these little legs move and that would be adorable. And so that is how I, um, that's how I got the idea. And then I was like, okay, well, I want to do it with the stamp too, but I can't do it with the stamp the same way. So it's two different interactives. Um, and I will share my struggles with you along the way. You guys know, I try to be very transparent here. And because it isn't something I do very often, there were some hiccups, but I worked around them and I was still able to get a working interactive card for both of them. Here, this is uh, my regular Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock and I am stamping the images on. Do you love this whale? I love this whale. I love this whale so much. I think this whale is adorable. Totally sucked me right in um, with the with the whale. Like that was just it. I was like, I have to use this. Uh, it's so cute. And I did him purple. Oh my gosh, he's so stinking cute. You're gonna see here in a minute. We're gonna color him up and he's gonna be purple. And I don't even like purple, but it's like the perfect color for this adorable little whale. 
But anyhow, um, so I picked my colors for this card based on the colors of cardstock I used for the first card because I wanted them to be matchy matchy in my photos because I have a real problem with that. And um, yeah, so that's that. So we're just going to go through, we're going to do some coloring of these images and then we'll start building our cards because our backgrounds are already done. What has been happening in my life? Did I try to get this video up on Monday? Yes, I did. Did I try to get it up on Tuesday? Most certainly. Here we are on Wednesday and you shall finally see the video. <laughs> um, because I originally was going in a completely different direction. And then the inspiration struck to make them interactive. And then so I had to start the backgrounds over from scratch. And so Monday I had spent time making a whole bunch of backgrounds, which I'll just use for another card another time. Um, other cards, because uh, I made a lot, a lot of backgrounds. Um, but then yesterday was like the coloring, constructing, and all of that, and then I just didn't have time to edit the video. So that's why we're here on Wednesday um, with the actual video. In addition to that, what has been, what's been going on in my life? What is our story time for today? Um, kids i guess my child my children are always our story time aren't they does anything e else even happen to me <laughs> does anything else even happen to me so caitlin's been doing pretty good since she um oh here this is funny this is a funny story that has to do with this card actually so when i started coloring my beautiful purple whale i realized very quickly that my purples needed to be refilled my copic markers needed to be refilled and so I'm going to struggle my way through this. Um, do you see how dark this V09 is? Do you see it? Yes. So I get through kind of like the first layer and I realize like these are not going to blend the way that I want them to blend because I just don't have enough moisture in my markers. They're on the drier side. And in order to get a really good blend, you have to have a... Um, pretty full marker. You know, you have to have enough moisture to get the colors to blend in the fibers of the paper. And if you don't have enough moisture to get into the fibers of the paper, it looks really splotchy, which is no, no good. Um, so I, after I did this first layer, I was like, okay, let me just refill them real quick. So I paused the video and I went to go refill them. And the first one I went to refill was V09, the super dark purple. And in refilling it, I don't know what happened. It like, I don't know if there was a bubble in there or what, but like there was a large amount of ink that, <laughs> that came out. And fortunately I was able to catch it all with my hand that was holding the marker. So I just kind of had purple like pooling in my palm, uh, but it was like in between my fingers and it was all over my palm. And I was just trying to keep it from getting on my floor or my clothes, which I did successfully. This is now after the markers have been refilled. And if you can see on my left hand, once we get like more of it that you can see, um, my whole hand is stained purple, y'all. <laughs> and even though I've washed it and scrubbed it and all of that jazz, there are still lines in my hands and in my fingers that are still stained purple. Um, I am hoping that they will be gone after a shower this evening <laughs> because I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow and I think it'll look crazy if I go in there with purple hands. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Speaking of my doctor's appointment, it is, um, it's a dermatology appointment because I, you guys, if you follow my channel, then you know that February of 22, I was diagnosed with skin cancer and I ended up having to go in for surgery to have that removed. Um, I have another spot that I am concerned about that's actually right on the bridge of my nose, which makes me very apprehensive because I know how they remove them and there is not a lot of area there, guys. Not a lot of, not a lot of skin. Um, so I'm a little apprehensive about that and I generally run pretty anxious. You know, if you know me, you know that. So I'm um, hoping that it's, that it's nothing, um, that it's just a spot that they can remove before it turns into anything else. And we haven't already been there. I noticed the spot probably about two weeks ago. Um, so I don't think it's been there for very long, but we'll just, we'll have to see how it shakes out. Um, so yeah, so that's going on. And then, um, 
Oh, I was going to talk about my sweet little jelly bean. So my sweet little jelly bean has been feeling much better um, since the last round of sickness, which was hand, foot, and mouth. She's been doing really good and sleeping through the night. And then for s- something has happened this week. What night was it? Sun- Sunday night? Was Sunday night my night to get up? No. I think it was Saturday night. Yeah. So Saturday night she got Eric up. No, that doesn't make any sense because it was going into Father's Day, so I would have got up with her. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, he ended up having to get up with her one night and was up until like 5.30. And then uh, she was just real restless last night. So last night I ended up getting up with her um, and we were up from about 3.40 to 5.30. Uh, So, and not that there seems to be anything wrong with her. She's just awake. So I'm not really sure what is going on. Um, I was very grateful that, so like usually when I go in there, like I rubber back, rubber head, my husband does the same thing, um, in an effort to try to calm her down, to get her to lay back down. And sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. Thankfully last night that did work. Now she did not go back to sleep right away, obviously. Um, she just continued to kind of lay there and, you know, play with her, um, blanket and stuff like that. But at least she let me sit in the rocker. (laughs) Because I was so tired. So I was like half falling asleep in the rocker waiting for her to fall asleep. Um, But like it's so she was really restless. So I was really terrified when I was leaving her room that like I was going to step on a creaky floorboard or I was going to um, like jiggle the door handle too hard and it was going to wake her up and then we were going to have to start from scratch. Like are you are you even a parent if you haven't like army crawled out of your kid's room because I have uh I've also hid (laughs) this is a true story um one of the times that she I thought she was asleep and I was getting ready to walk out of her room and she like rolled over right as I was getting ready to open the door and so I didn't have any time to open the door and step out I literally hid behind her dresser so I couldn't make eye contact with her in the hopes that she would just roll over and fall back asleep. Uh, uh, during the summer when I wear flip-flops, if I'm leaving her room, I take my shoes off so there's no floppy sound. Uh, I carry my <laughs> I carry my flip-flops out of her bedroom. Um, yeah, these things that we do, the things that we do as parents, just to make sure we don't wake up our kid and we can have a little bit of peace. So here, this is, uh, this was not my best idea, but it was an idea nonetheless. So I don't have one of the slider dies, um, from Spellbinders. So what I did was I used one of these little octopus tentacles and I knew that it wouldn't cut all the way through and that I was going to have to like cut out this end piece, which is what you see me doing here. In hindsight, I would not have done this. This was not wide enough for my whale to slide through. I thought it would be, but it wasn't. Um, And you'll see at the end, I am having to trim some of it away. If I had to do it all over again, if you do not have a slider die, uh, what I would have done is I would have used one of my stacking rectangles, the like the thinnest, littlest one in the center. I would have used that to cut a long, thin rectangle, and then I would have used that as my slider. So don't do what I did, because uh, I ended up having to, to cut it. Now, because my whale is such a large image, um, you can't see where I cut it. The whale blocks it in its entirety because there's only so much room for this whale to move to you know what I'm saying and I put the um the penny you'll see I put the penny in the center of the whale so he just slides a little bit back and forth um but yeah I would I would change the way that I did that but I still made it work here I'm just white heat embossing my sentiments these are from the um clear stamp and die set and they do have coordinating dies so one of them, originally I was going to use the whale sentiment. Um, what does it say? Hold on, I'll find it. I'll find it and I'll tell you what it says. Uh, whale, hello there. And I thought that was cute. I was like, this adorable whale, I'll use that. Um, but then once I made it interactive, I thought the I'll cross the ocean for you was more fitting. So I used that one instead. Here I'm using that same teal with the embossing folder of the month. Um, super love this. It's like little water spouts. I, I think you could use it with florals as well and it would look amazing. Um, but so I use that on that same teal colored cardstock. And then that is going to be my background for 
my slider card, not the, what do you even call these? I don't know, with the brads. I don't, I don't know what you call them. Maybe somebody else knows. Once you see me put it together, tell me if you know what they're called. Um, but so I built up all of the stamping at the bottom, like this was the bottom of the ocean. And so I'm just getting those things glued down, like my seashells I'm gluing down. Um, and then I'm gluing down the large, like sea life piece with some florals uh, stacked in behind it. And that was just to bring in more color because I thought it was pretty. Uh, you obviously could use them by their, themselves. Um, so then once I have that done, then I'm going to adhere that whole piece to the bottom. Now you could skip this and it would still be a really cute card with just the watercolor background and the um, whale. But I think that this is fun. Uh, it does cover up a lot of that watercolor, but I'm not worried about it. Um, because the watercolor isn't meant to be the focal point. The watercolor is meant to set the scene, if you will. Set the stage for our little slider. Um, then I just added the sentiment and then I think we're going to move on to building the slider. So I don't want to go too far into any other, any other stories because I don't think that we'll make it through there. Um, yeah, so we're going to move on to the slider. So I just popped out that portion. This is, it's way too thin guys, like just in reality. But in order to make the slider, I am using, um, I'm not using liquid adhesive for this. I am using a really strong rip tape. I believe this one is from Honeybee. Um, and this is how I am adhering my penny to my whale. So I just put two little strips of that and I'm going to glue it right to the back of my whale. And then I will flip the whole piece over um, so that I can see the penny on the other side of the whale. Here, I just wanted to position it so that the whale covered up all of the, um, what is this, my little channel here. And then this is me, I'm starting to trim this down because I've already tested it and realized that uh, it's just not wide enough to for me to get any foam tape in there and for it to actually move. So I'm trying to do my best to make it not hideous, you know, in case any of it shows. But then I lay my whale down. You can see that little piece of penny that is sticking through. I am going to put two layers of foam tape on this um, so that that way it's really, it's got a lot of area to move through. Um, what is this foam tape? This is, I think, all to news foam tape. But anyway, Two, two stackings. And the reason that is, is just because if you don't have enough room, it's it's not going to move. And then I will put my penny on top of that foam tape, and then he'll slide around here. You can see um, he moves. Um, he doesn't move as good as he could if it was a regular, like, single channel, like just straight across. Uh, and here I am adjusting it as I go. But he does he does move, and I think he's cute. So there's that. So now that that is done, I am going to put a thicker, this foam tape is substantially thicker. This is extra wide foam tape from Picket Fence Studios, and it is already a thicker one. If you don't have another thicker version of foam tape, then just do, again, two stacks of foam tape of the other one, whether it's Scotch or Altenew or whatever you have. Um, just make sure you don't get too close to the slidey parts, so that way your penny doesn't get stuck. Um, so once I have that down, then I'll go ahead and remove the release paper and then mount it to my card base. The, um, if you want a little bit more wiggle room with this type of adhesive, put liquid glue on the back of it. Normally I would have, but I was very outside of my element <laughs> with the interactive cards. Um, so I just, it, it didn't even occur to me. I just put it down. That's when it occurred to me. And I was like, man, I hope this is straight because I just went for it. And thankfully it was. So then now it's glued down and you can see my whale still moves around from side to side as if he is swimming in his little ocean. Now, you know, I have a problem with the white outlines. I can't just leave them be. So I did pick the colors that matched and just colored in my edges so that it would blend into the background. That was just a combination of blue greens as well as, you know, if there's a seashell that's up against some pink coral, then, you know, it has some pink on the seashell. You know what I'm saying? I've done this before. Um, and then that is that card for now. This is the second way we're going to do the interactive cards. These little, this is the small die of the month. So adorable. Super cute. Love this little octopus. 
Um, and so I'm just going to build him up. He's got three layers. He's got one with his legs that are in the forefront and then one with his little tentacles. And then these are the back legs. So these are Brad's. This is, for my husband who is watching my video, the reason why I hoard craft supplies. Just so you know, I bought these Brad's back in 2010. So there, and I still have them. And I was able to make an interactive card with them today. Haha. -ha. So you can do, I was showing you the difference between, um, I have just some plain silver ones and then I have some ones that would match the colors. I ended up going with the plain silver ones because you couldn't see them, so it didn't matter. But if you were worried about your item being um, too small and being able to see part of the brad, you could go with a brad that was the same color. Um, so, you know, just whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, here I'm building up these little jellyfish. For the jellyfish, I cut them out of two different colors of purple and then also out of vellum. So the little jelly legs would be vellum and would be transparent and I thought that would be a fun little extra layer. So for the adhesion of the brads, I am using glossy accents because glossy accents will pretty much glue anything. It's made for metals. Can you see my purple in between my fingertips, PPS? Um, and so that's what I did. I just filled the brad with the glossy accents and then glued them down to the front side of my jellyfish and my octopus. And then I just let them sit until they were dry. It really did not take very long. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're probably thinking like glossy accents doesn't dry immediately. It doesn't, but it didn't take very long. By the time I was done um, doing the rest of my things, they were dry. So I'm just going to lay these little guys on the back of them while they're drying so that I don't lose any of my pieces parts. And then I'm going to go back over to the rest of the card. Um, what else did I do? I did something else in between here. Oh, the little stars. Um, so these are the little starfish. I cut them out of, oh man, I used both. I think I used both spellbinders this is the brights pack by the way because i like to buy the packs to try the cardstock before i commit to like buying one color of multi like one a large pack of one color um i like to try out and see if i like them or not and i really did like their cardstock it worked very well um but i would highly recommend any company that you're buying from if they have a sampler pack start with that so now here you can see I've put the little back legs on. I folded down my Brad and his little back legs turn. They move. Um, so they're super adorable. And do they move on their own, like without any help? Meh. Ish. Um, but they move more if you touch them with your hands. Just, just an FYI there. And then so I'm going to do the same thing with my little jellyfish legs. Fold that little Brad over. And originally I thought that I was going to cut the, like the leg part of the brads off and I would just stick them down um, with foam tape. And then I realized pretty quickly that it kept my legs from moving quite a bit. Um, so you're going to see me try it a couple of times here and it just wasn't really, it just wasn't really working. So I ended up poking holes into my uh, card front and then feeding the brad through do not, I repeat, do not poke holes in your paper the way that I did. It is not safe. <laughs> it's not safe, y'all. So the one that I will uh, show you is this one right here. And I just took my spellbinder scissors and I held it in my hand and I poked a hole right through it. That's totally not safe. Get a mat poke them the correct way, poke them into the mat, not where your hand is holding it and you could possibly stab yourself. Don't do that. Don't do as I say, don't do as I do. So now you can see that it does move a little bit freer. So then from there, I just went ahead and committed to the fact that I was going to have to poke holes for my jellyfish, which is fine. Um, and then I just uh, am trying to figure out here where I'm going to put them so I know where to poke my holes. Um, so now my holes are poked. And here, when I thought that I was going to do them on the front, um, I had trimmed off with my clippers um, little pieces of the brad. And so that's why you see me using my, um, what are those? Those hero arts. They're the metal clippers. They're great for cutting apart dies. But anyway, um, so 
I'm just using those for the um, edges that are a little bit sharp um, to fold those down so I don't poke myself. And there you can see my little jellyfish moves. And then um, we'll put the other little jellyfish up in the top right hand corner. And he will, or she, I shouldn't, I shouldn't assume, he or she um, will move as well. And I think they're just super cute. Like, I think these would be great for kids. They do stick up off the card because the only thing they're being held on with is by the brad. So they do stick up off the card uh, just a little bit, but that doesn't really bother me. If it bothers you, I suppose you could um, maybe tack down. Nah, I don't even know how you would do that. I don't think you could tack down the top part. Um, but yeah, just know they'll be a little bit more raised than usual. And that's okay. Um, here, I'm just going to go through. This is like the little um, seaweed that's in the set. I cut it out in two different colors of green. So I put that down along with the starfish. And then in order to accent my sentiments, I'm using... These are my favorite from Spellbinders. This, this is aquamarine gems. They're aquamarine. I love them. And then, of course, I added some shimmer to my whale and my flowers as well as um, my die cut. So I added it to my jellyfish and then to the top portion of my octopus. Um, just for some added, you know, little a little glamour. Then I did some white highlights, not on the die cut card, but just on the stamped card. I did it on the whale and then on to the stamen of some of the flowers. And then that's it. That's that's both the cards. Um, so I hope you learned a little something along with me. I always appreciate your time. I will link um, the kits below if you're interested in checking them out. Thank you guys so much, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.